Welcome back, everybody. Pleasure to have you uh, once again this evening. We're going to do, you know how in exercise classes, they'll sometimes do stretches to begin? Well, so I'm the, the stretch, <laughs> right. Well, no, I'm not going to put you through that. Not quite that bad. No splits. Um, but the stretch is I open up the tie mm -hmm. and open up the butt. This is, uh, I think I mentioned to you, is an insider tip. Always do it. You'll, you'll know very quickly if you haven't. And then just as you're hitting, if it's chakras, it's um, after the cottage, like when you're, they're, uh, you're ready to take out the safe recover, that's the time to get buttoned up again. Like typically, there's the perfect moment after cottage before you have to go up there. We're going to get to this spot, and I'll point out where it is, because there's a spot at which you actually have to go up and expect things to save your tower, and it's really awkward to, un, you know, to rebutton your button and do your tie when you're holding a save your Don't try it at all. <laughs> it, it gets messy, 40 days messy. messy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right, so it's like right at the Brooks May time. Right. And then uh, what you can do is during a lane, like before Van Mar, that's the perfect time for redoing your tie. So then you turn around and you give them that million dollar uh, <laughs> smile. <laughs> and you have for each cause of success. Okay, we are going to continue with chakras. Uh, up until now, we have been doing uh, Mariv. Uh, we're doing, you know, Kabbalah, Shabbos, and Mariv, and now we're going to go on to chakras, which I think you're, you're in the Art Scroll Sitter is on page 402. I want to make a brief comment about Yom Tov Nusuf because there's an entirely different Nusuf between Mar for Yom Tif and Mar for Shabbos, right? If you think about it, the Mar for Shabbos is And then Mar for Yom Tif is Now, Chakras is different because Chakras, for the most part, it's the same dominant up until you get to uh, Shemun Esrei, and you have a different Nusla. The only part where there's really a big difference is in the way you begin after Nishmas. So in Yantif, it's okay. We're not doing Yantif now. I don't know, maybe at some point Stuart's going to do like a 202. That was the next uh, question. Right? Uh, 201 level <laughs> class, whatever, we'll, we'll do Yantif. Uh, but what I would like to say is that Yantif Dotting is a lot of fun. Uh, as is Rosh Chodesh, you know, we just had a Rosh Chodesh. If you can learn that Nusla, it's really, really special. And it's a wonderful skill to have because it's even lesser known than the Shabbos Nusla. So if you really want to earn your stripes as a Chazan, and, uh, and we, should, we should issue like a certification, Stuart. You know, well, I'm, I'm meeting with the rabbi tomorrow. It's actually coming <laughs> up. So. But really, I mean, the next question for the class was, after we're done with the Shabbat services, do we want to go on and do... Okay, so we'll have to see. It could be people will want weekday. And it could be people would be interested okay. in Rosh Chodesh. Think about it. Uh, and then we could do, you know, Jewish old Yiddish show tunes. <laughs> you know, for all of you. Uh, I, would, I would give up my post forever if it got to that. But, okay. Um, so I, I just learned that quick word about Yom Tov uh, I highly recommend it. It's really a beautiful missile and it's very inspiring. People, ironically, the same people that always are complaining that you took too long during Shabbos, for some reason, they're okay with it on Yom Tov. Uh, I, I don't know why. I mean, it's the same meal, it's the same kiddush, it's whatever. But that's just sort of the, the policy among Jews worldwide. So, uh, a quick shout out for Yom Tov. Okay, let's get started on the top at the top of page four o four. What page is the art sitter? It's uh, I'm, I'm with the arts. I'm with the standard art school sitter here. And uh, Shokanad, yeah, which is on page four o four. Well, this is one feel a little bit like it's a. So, but as they say, it took too long, or they're just being funny, or don't. Yeah, just being funny. Oh yeah, well, yeah, I'm being funny. It, it, there, what I mean is that, for the most part, if as we discussed, you don't do the cantor thing, but you do the chazan thing. Remember, chazan, chazan can say cantors can't. Right. So, so long as you stick to being a chazan and to making the davening enjoyable for people, yeah. most people won't complain. But we have an old tradition in Judaism that somebody needs to complain. Yeah. Well, if, what's if, a good dominant without a question? I think personally it took a little too long. <laughs> right, right. So that's what I mean. But people have even more thought of. I think I the phone's on, right? The phone. Yeah. Phone's on? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we're good. <laughs> oh, once burned, twice burned. Very good to do it. Okay. Um, because we're up here in the Belanovsky, I just wanted to mention a word quickly about the space. We had talked about this in the first class, but I want to point it out here. 
The Belofsky is obviously the largest space in this building, I think. Well, I guess you could dive in, in the space downstairs, but I mean, it's the largest you know, single davening space. And yet, I find it very easy to dive in because your voice just carries. So don't get thrown by a large room. It's a really, I think it's a, a just a, a lack of uh, having done a, like a double blind test in different spaces. This is, you know, large spaces are fairly easy. Even if you have a large space, it's got good acoustics, you're really good to go. All right, and let us begin with Shabbos Davening. Let me just mention the things that you should always ask the Hassan before you go up to do the Shabbos Davening. First, you should ask him... The Gavai. The What did I say, Hassan? Right, you were the Hassan. Don't talk to yourself. <laughs> uh, ask the Gavai first about Kelwadim. There are two basic Minhagim. Some places will split Kelwadim up and they'll do it stanza by stanza, and some places will go straight through throughout the entire Kelwadim. So ask the Hassan what their preference is. Um, also, uh, ask the Hassan uh, if they have any special preference for the Kedusha tomb. Right? Sometimes uh, certain places are interested in, in having like the Kedusha done with a specific home club because people are familiar with it. So it's a worthwhile thing to ask the Hazan. And then the final thing that I usually ask is, do you do the young Israel Nusuf for Otsah Sefer Torah, when you take out the Sefer Torah? Right? Because you're going to need to know that as you get up to Ein Kabbalah Be'elokim, are you just going to do the yeshivish thing where you sort of mumble and you say, or are you going to go, and then you wait for go, so it's worthwhile to ask people if you're in a setting that could very easily do the young Israel Muslim, yes, do it. I thought of this very thing this class Shabbos when we had a guest cousin who did not sing the day of the Torah, which is our custom. But he, did, he hadn't asked and no one told him. Is it appropriate for the Gabayim to go up to somebody who's obviously not doing what you want them to do and say, now wait a minute, we want you to sing this or give them a yeah. card or something? Like that? Yes, I, what I would say is that if you're the Gabay, you definitely should give people a heads up about what you, you uh, like to see done. So for example, I just stopped with the this Shabbos in Baltimore and I noticed they had written in the Musaf Shmanesri, it was Shabbos Bavarchim, so they asked for the Dabin Musaf and then in the Musaf Kedusha, they had listed um, on the last three stanzas. One second, let's pull it up here. Here we go. The stanza of Kivoda Maleolam, Mimkoma Uifen, and Hu Elokeinu. They had that, they have written Hachazim Minagi, that the Hazim should sing. I was very appreciative because. You know, they gave me the heads up. Uh, it's very easy for people to miss that. So what I would say is, if you're the Gabai, it's really your job to try and make sure that people know if you have specific preferences. Um, as far as when it's okay to tell a chazan. So what I would say is, it's really just a judgment of which is gonna be more awkward for them. That is, if it's gonna be more awkward for them not to know this, because everybody's gonna look at him like, what are you doing? I mean, don't you, <laughs> didn't you get the email? Like, didn't you, like, what's, you missed the perk? So it, it'd be worthwhile to just mention as he's about to step up, hey, you know, you do the ugly sort of stuff. But if it's the kind of place where sometimes they do it, sometimes they don't, and it won't be any particular embarrassment, then I just let it go. Okay, so uh, as I said, three things to ask the cousin. How are you gonna do Kelwadin? Are you gonna break it up stanza by stanza? Um, with the Kedusha, is there any specific tune that you like to sing? And then finally, do you do the Young Israel Nusa with the Hotzah Sacred Torah or not? And now we begin at the top of page 404. And then that's all you say. The Tzibur goes on to Hasuk and so on. And then everybody goes on, even Makalos reveals and so on. Oh, 
Chos, Dabi Ben Yishai, Avdecha Meshichecha. And then they're going to Yishtabach and so on. Uh, now, uh, as I mentioned, most often uh, we start with the diamond. This is not one of those examples. It's almost univers universally accepted that the place to begin with Yishtabach is Berachos, not with Baruch Hashem. So you begin with Berachos, Behodos, Me'at Haviyad Olam, Baruch Atadonai, Ewa Melech, Todoba Tishbachos, Ewa Hodos, and then you go right into Kaddish. You know, there, there may be, is that the main, um, is that the main, um, it is, yes. I think there are actually markings by hand in there where it's not the diamond. Oh, really? I, I, I think, yes, I remember. But Interesting. I, yeah. Not here, but it could be. I, I'm, I'm not, not sure where. I'm not sure where. Yeah. Okay. Yes, yeah, question. Uh, you start be, uh, before the tagline, the Brooklyn Hashem, where, where do we start? Bureau Post. It's five words earlier. Bureau Post. Okay, so what, why? I mean, yeah, was yeah, that decided it, by, by what? I, I don't know like why, how the music was sort of uh, composed or how it, but that's just how the music flows. It would be very difficult for me to start from Baruch Hashem because I'd be starting in the middle of a musical line, okay. you know, so it, it, it always begins with it would be and I think people will also be surprised because it would come out of nowhere, it wouldn't be what mm -hmm. they were kind of expecting. Uh, I, I like the uh, the marks and the Birnbaum city. It's less to say. Oh, is there? <laughs> what if you do? He's always trying to look for a percentage <laughs> <He's not> off. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you guys a funny story. I was um, doing an interfaith discussion panel oh. in D.C. at Accenture Consulting. I don't know how they got my name, but they, they asked me uh, if I would come and represent the Jewish faith. There was a pastor and a priest, so Catholic, Protestant. Um, there was a Hindu rabbi person type, you know. And there was supposed to be an imam, but the imam didn't show up. It got kind of really interesting when they started asking about Islam. And we had to sort of create a straw man and talk about Islam. But I'm getting distracted. Um, somebody asked a question, and we had a relatively short question and answer period, but this person tried to cram two questions in one. And it was, it was a, a tough panel to be on because there was a lot of very sophisticated, mature, highly educated people. It wasn't like a bunch of college students. And they were all really, very focused, and there was a lot of sort of tension in the room, and all the people on the panel, except for the Hindu woman who just sort of loved everybody and did everything, and everything was beautiful and wonderful, but the other, uh, the, both the Protestant and the Catholic, they were pretty uh, firm in their faith and in their beliefs. So uh, when they, uh, when this person tried to ask, I, mean, I just tried to sort of break the tension with some humor. So when this person asked two questions, I said, wait a minute, that's two for the price of one. That's what we do. That's not yours. That's okay. <laughs> now, um, in terms of the, the um, uh, could you uh, my, my mother's actually visiting from Israel. Yeah, and uh, I mentioned that I'm doing this class. Yeah, you, you'll, you'll open the door for you. Inside? Yeah, you'll open the door for you on that side. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We, we were uh, very, very privileged to be honored at the Ishi dinner last night, and my parents still live from Israel. My mother's still here until tomorrow. So I wanted her to chef a little nachas. Trust me, she, she earned this. She paid this forward for years of having to deal with me, so she deserves a little not us now. Um, yeah, question. Yeah, would, you, would you mind doing the book for those again? Sure, sure, absolutely. Is there any reason why that your mother over there? Is that mine? Is that your mother? That yes, it is. She could sit with us. Okay. We're not, we're not, <laughs> we're not. <laughs> Speak for yourself. I'm not Haredi. <laughs> she wants to have Nachet from her son. Right, it, it, it's true, it's a class, it's not to be what I'm going to you for all Shiloh's from, <laughs> from now on. What I'm going to you for all Shiloh's from now on. Oh my gosh, now we're in the Beltway Vod and the Washington Vod, and I don't want to get into this. <laughs> we're just trying to talk about Dominic, really. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. We're just trying to talk about Dominic, really. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so again, from Birachos. Birachos, say how does. Me'atavian olam, baruchat Adonai, el melech adom atish b'chos, el ha'odos adonai niflos, ha'bocher 
Now, this is one of the finer points, and it's just important to know. Remember, I mentioned to you, I mentioned to you there are certain times where you wouldn't be aware of something until you, it's too far to, to then step back. Sometimes, rookie chazan, nobody in this room, but rookie chazan will go straight from the end of Yishtaba into Yishtadah, which is a mistake, because people are standing up after Yishtaba. So you have to give people a little bit of time so they can stand up. You know, here in this shul, it's not as bad, because it's basically fixed benches, so it doesn't make a lot of rumble. But if you're in a place where there are chairs and tables or fenders, and it gets really messy. So you want to give people time to like get up properly, and then you begin with, uh, with uh, the cottage. Um, quick note, the gray box. The gray box is done in some kihilos during the Aser Simei Shuba. And I believe this is actually the minig of this shul to do Shir Hamalos, right? Yes. The niggin that's used for the Shir Hamalos is the Rosh Hashanah Yom Kippur niggin. So it goes, Shir, uh, shir Hamalos, Mimamakim Kirosi Adonai, Adonai Shimo Bekoli, Tiyano Zeva Kashuvos, Lekol Takanunai. So that's the proper way to do it. If you don't know the Yom Kippur notes, so we'll have to we'll have to include it on the tape so people can have it. Uh, because you know, for somebody who's diving during a service of that's really the only piece that you have to do by that nosel. No one's gonna stone you if you just do it as a regular Shira Hamalos, but that is actually the proper way to do it is to switch into the Rosh Hashanah nosel for Shira Hamalos. Okay. And now with Kaddish. Yiskadal, Yiskadash, Shemei Rabo, Yomadim Rock, you were saved, Yamlik, Mahuse, Behaikon, Via Behon, Hail, the whole base, Israel, Agalov, it's Mankari, the theme Ruamain. And you remember how we do a main in Shemei Rabo. We wait for a moment, and then as people are beginning, we join in with them. And we don't start with a main, we say the Hebrew a main, and then we say, Yehei Shmei Rabo Mevorach, Le'olam Ulomei, O Maya, Yisparach, Yishtabach, Yisparach, Yishtabach, Yispar, Yisromam, Yisnasei, Yisador, Yisalev, Yisalo, Shmei Dekucho, Berichu, Le'elo, Min Kol, Birchosa, Bishiroso, and then once everybody answers Amen, you bow at Barfu. So here's how it goes. You bow at Barfu, so bar, but it's not a, a, a knee and then bow. You just go down, and then you come up when you're saying S. So it's down for Barfu, come up as you say S, and then you should be standing when you say Hashem. So it will go like this. And then for Baruch, you nod your head. Now this reminds me of a question that came up last week. And I was embarrassed because I didn't have the answer. Uh, so I asked it to Rabbi Reinhold. And it was, it was so perfect that you gave me that question because... They wanted to film me for the dinner in the base medrash, and they, they wanted to have me speaking to the Rosh Hashiva and Rabbi Reinbold. And I'm thinking, like, this is going to be so cheesy. I'm going to walk up to Rabbi Reinbold, I'm going to try to talk sports with him, and he doesn't know sports, and it just going to look so bad. I said, I need some kind of halachic question to ask. And you provided me with the perfect halachic question. That was, if you recall, <clears throat> you asked me when we say Magena Vos um, after. Mar, we say by a fulu. after one s, right? We say by a fulu. and then when we're not in a, uh, in a, a temporary minion, but we're in a permanent minion, we say magen avos, the bracha me'in shava, which is the condensation of the seven brachas of one s, right? And we begin baruch atah Hashem, okeinu le'kavos, okeinu le'kavos, and then we go magen avos, speed baro. So you ask me if you're supposed to bow or not. So I asked Rabbi Reinhold. And he said to me, this he, his rabbi, his mentor, is uh, Rabbi Shalom Shapiro from Tulsa, Cleveland. He said that Rabbi Shalom Shapiro has a four-volume halacha work, and he has a chuba on this very question with four rounds of correspondence. 
So I, I, I breathe a sigh of relief, <laughs> not to be chump. I actually ask a meaningful question that's discussed <laughs> by a meaningful postcard. And the bottom line is that one should bow when they say uh, Baruch HaTah Hashem. So you go, Baruch HaTah Hashem, okay, and so on. Uh, is to answer your question. Yes, David. And the short answer is that when you bow with Baruch, you do bow with this. Here you said you don't. You mean for uh, the Baruch HaTah Hashem? <coughs> well, you mean, oh, you said Baruch HaTah? I think you probably would. Did I, did I just yeah. say that? He said Baruch HaTah. He said Baruch HaTah. Yeah. Baruch HaTah. Yeah. So you would for, I think you do for Main Shadow because it's part of Shemana Esrei. So that would be Baruch HaTah Hashem. Okay, no problem. But for Barfu, it's just down and up. Just to say the Atah in the kitchen, you would sing it. Right, I guess so. Right, right. Am I, am I missing something, David? If, if, uh, if Ar Rabbeinu so Arthur Scroll says differently, I'm willing no, to. No, no, but um, is Barfu, is that the plural of Barfu? Well, Barfu is speaking to, yeah, to a group. But Baruch is different than Shemun Esrei. The Baruch HaTah Hashem, you're speaking directly to Hashem. Baruch Hu is you're calling everybody to come together and begin to tell. Okay. okay. So again, be Baruch Hu Es Hashem Baruch Baruch Adonai Ham Baruch Leolam Ba'ed. And then you begin with uh, the bracha of Yotzer Hamor. It's the first bracha of. Uh, before Kriyashma. Now, let's go back briefly to the structure of the davening. We discussed this with Marv. Let's talk about, just for a moment, the structure of chakras, because it's just good to have sort of a thumbnail sketch, a 3,000 foot uh, sketch of what it looks like. We begin with Barfu, which is the call to public davening. There's then two brachas before Shema and Esrei, I mean before Shema, two brachas before Shema, Shema, one bracha after Shema, Mona Esrei, Chazaras Nashatz, and Kaddish. That's pretty much the Shachar's davening. So we're now going to begin the first bracha of Shema, although it's made a little bit more exciting on Shabbos because we have an addition to the Nusach, whereas in Yantif we just say the regular weekday Nusach of Hamer, Laaretz, and so on. But on Shabbos we do Hakol Yudufa, and then we do Kiel Adam. You don't count Kosei Shalom, it's a no, that's the psicha. That's the opening of the bracha. But it doesn't end until uh, the bottom of page 412. Okay, so you would uh, just continue on silently from Baruch HaTashem through Hakal Yodufa until Ein Kerkech HaHashem Elokeim. Now, here's an interesting point. There is no funky diamond in Ein Kerkech in Hakol uh, So I'll just tell you, the place where people typically start is Ein Kerkecha, which is in the Arsul Siddur, three lines up from the bottom. And you begin like this. Ein Kerkecha Adonai Elohim Bolam Hazeh Yein Tulos Hamakeinu Vechayei Olam Habo Efes Piltofa Galeinu Vimos Hamashiach Vyein Doma Lecha Moshiyeinu Vyisliyas as we discussed with L'chadodi, there are any number of tunes that you can put Kelod into. You can put old tunes, new tunes, Jewish tunes, uh, recently become Jewish tunes uh, that you can do Kelod into. I have my own personal preference, which is sort of like an oldie but goodie. Um, I happen to really like oldie but goodie tunes, um, and I feel very comfortable doing them. I don't feel in any way you know, sort of like old fashioned, or maybe I just feel retro. Um, my favorite tune for Kel Adon goes, El Adon, I'll go Hamasim, Baruch Umevora, Befi Kol Neshama, Golove Tuvo, Leave me so 
Baruch Kivod Adonai Nidekomo. You may get a responsive reading. The, would you say you can't get a responsive? You may get a responsive. Well, it should be responsive. That is, the seaboard really should pick up when I finish. Are you saying they should be good ball for me? They are funny. Yeah, well, so I'm not, maybe I wasn't clear. When I would finish uh, everybody should join in Kadosh, Kadosh, Kadosh. If I feel like they're not going to join in, what I'll try to do is encourage them, sort of nudge them along to join in with Kadosh, Kadosh, Kadosh. But then there should be a response of reading when I say Baruch Vanim, the Tibur should respond Baruch Kvod. Yeah. And, yeah. To the earlier point you made about that uh, you shouldn't necessarily follow the art scroll diamond as an indication where it's dark. So if there are so many exceptions, uh, and the convention is different than what is in the sitter, why don't they, why don't the sitter make it clear yeah. that, that this is where it's, it's, it's confusing? It's, it's a really fair question. Uh, you know, I, um, <laughs> but I've got a few. You know, I don't know. I have a friend who works in the binding department. He's responsible for all the binding, and now they, they recently, I think, started printing in the Arts Row building. Yeah, Arts Row has an entire city block in Brooklyn. Um, so I'm going to try to see if I can get in touch with somebody at Arts Row who's responsible for the diamonds. <laughs> I'm going to find out, because I'm really curious about that. Yeah, do you know the guy? No, I was just going to say, I'm using the program, and every time you just type an Arts Row line, the program is kind of the right place. Oh, wow. Ooh. <laughs> well, Got it. Got it. Right, right, that's true. Absolutely. Yeah. And all the way Interesting. Yeah, however, the two art skull, because this art skull had it correct the way you wanted it, not the way. Oh, really? Right. Interesting. So maybe this is the. I wonder. This is the, every, this is the weekday and the shot as well. You know, Interesting. Um, so I wonder if the Watchmen, because now you know they have the new Hebrew English, which is the Watchmen edition. They basically have updated this, you know, standard issue uh, Shoal Sitter uh, that's been around for I think some like thirty years, thirty-five years, um, and they've come out with the Watchmen edition, which is uh, an updated print. It's the same Hebrew, but they have a bit of a different font of English and you know and the headers. So I wonder if they've updated it there. We'll have to find out. That'd be really interesting. Uh, you know, someday that guy should publish a blog. Like the Diamond Guy blog, it would be so interesting. <laughs> I actually, I was, I was recently advising um, Art Scroll on, on social media, and I said, you know, what you should do on your social media channels is you should have some of your your people who are behind the scenes that nobody's ever heard of. They they should you know they should get active on social media. I'm sure people be really curious. Like if the Diamond Guy showed up, I'd be totally curious. Here, <laughs> yes, you know. <laughs> okay, so that is um, or Hadash. Okay. We're now on to the second bracha of Shema, Avarah. Uh, now, a couple important things to know. The minute is to gather your tzitzis when you say the Havienu. Uh, so you're going to be standing up there. It's very easy to sort of lose what we normally do in davening when you're up there. So it's good to just remember, like, you know, you're doing what every, everybody else is doing, and you're gathering your tzitzis together uh, of the, your talis. And Right, right. So I think you begin with the Havienu, and then... You, um, you, yeah, but you, get, you get the word may have accomplished you get your, your cue that you forgot. No, right, you're saying if, if you didn't grab a bite and have any and you get to Arab you yeah. better remember. Right? And if you missed two warnings, I'm sorry. It's 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 done. <laughs> Fall, fallen. Okay. Um, this is another example we talked about this with Shema back in Marev. Some places have the minute where everybody finishes together with the Chavzin because they don't want to find themselves in limbo with the question of whether or not they answer a main to the bracha of the chazan, which would separate between the end of the bracha of Kriyashma and Kriyashma. So therefore, what I'll do is I'll typically slow down before I get to Baruch HaTah Hashem, and I'll, I will definitely not hot dog it. That's like the worst place. I'll just do a very plain vanilla so that people can join in as they would like to. And I think even here, like in, in this show, where I think it's sort of a mixed bag, some people do, some people don't, but there's enough people that do that it, it makes it worthwhile to do that. So, you would begin from the Kerab Tanu. The Kerab Tanu, the Shimhagadol, Sela Bemes, the Odos, the Kal, the Echet, the Ahava, Baruch, Hatadonai, 
Uh, I, I think I can say the Shem Hashem because I'm sort of teaching, but so as not to get you all into questions of whether it's Islamic or not, I'll just say it myself. Tor Yisrael, Kuma Beatras Yisrael, Uber Echinomecha, Yehuda Yisrael, Go Aleinu Adonai Tevo Shemo, Kiddush Yisrael, Baruch Atadonai, Go Aleinu. Now, why do people trail off at the end? So here is the Here's the issue. It's really the same thing, but it's much more accentuated with the hefsik separating the end of the bracha after Shema and Shema and Esther. Because the Gemara says you have to be so much to Ula Butfila. The end of the bracha after Shema has the major Gula passages, right? So, Micha Mofa Be'am Hashem, Micha Mofa Nedar Bakodesh. If you remember, that's from Kriya Siamsuf. And then, Sur Yisrael, Kuma Be'ezra Yisrael, Go Aleinu. Ga'al Yisrael, that's the Ge'ula. So there really is a problem, I'll pay the Gemara, the Gemara Brachos, of splitting up Ge'ula and Tefillah. Therefore, we don't. The minig is that we don't. Everybody does not answer Amen. The question is, how do you not answer Amen? So some people just do it very simply. Our minig is not to answer Amen because we don't want to separate between the two. Okay, that's one approach. Another approach that's taken is there are many opinions that if you finish a bracha the same time as somebody else, you don't answer Amen which is what we do by Shema, right? People who sing together with the Chazen, they want to finish at the same time as the Chazen, so they don't have the question of answering them anymore. The accepted practice, though, has become that the Chazen doesn't actually finish the bracha out loud. And that way, nobody has to answer them anymore. So the Chazen, just one woman, typically does, is they trail off when they get to Ga'al Yisrael. So they do some variation of Ga'al, or Ga'al Yisrael, but some, some version of trailing off so that they don't finish the bracha, and therefore nobody answers the name. Max? Yeah, well, I've also heard people say it pretty distinctly. Yeah, okay, so as I said, the, the people who do it clearly would either be depending on the shita that by saying it out loud, because the minig is not to say amen because we don't want to create the hefzik, you don't answer amen. Or if you finish together with the chazin, it's also not a problem. So if everybody finishes together with the Chazan, which is you know, maybe part of the reason why everybody sings Sur Yisrael together, that way you wouldn't have that issue. But I think the more common practice is that the Chazan trails off and doesn't finish the Bracha al Yeah, Rabbi, Rabbi Rosenbaum said to say it out loud. Oh, really? Yes. Interesting. And he did the introduction this year for this whole series. Oh my gosh. And he said you should answer? No, no yeah, no. no, 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 no didn't he say you should have to no, say no, 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 no. He say it with, say it with the... the specifically does answer our main. He yes. didn't say we're supposed to do that. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, that's no, he says that he's supposed to include with the chazim. Oh, yeah, so the chazim not to... Not to... Oh, interesting. Okay, so that, so this is... Uh, Oh, yeah, I definitely have well, yeah. <laughs> Luckily, wow. he walked out here. We, we, we got a lot of them. So that's we we have the, the current arts girl. We have the uh, you know, <laughs> young Israel. So the yeah. first thing that says it out loud was a student, a very close student of Prop Salvation. So it may be that he's, I'm assuming, I never asked him, but I assume he's following something that he learned. That the rug used to do? I believe he was. He was a savage. Oh, really? Uh, we gotta find out. We gotta get. get I'll let you do the name after the. Okay, so we'll have to. We'll have to. We'll do some research with Armstrong with YU to figure out, or go go to Brookline and get. Back to, back to the Yassim Rahman again. Yeah. Uh, sometimes people say in the Brook of Rules, they don't go to the end of the paragraph. Yeah, that's what Armstrong wants to say. Well, that's that's because the for some of the. Well, is that, I'm, I'm trying, um, remind me, where, where you, is that on the... Oh, you're talking about um, before they get to Al Abu Yeah. Yes, yes it's yeah. true. There are different ways to do this. Right, yeah, some people say... Right, street. and they go down and they you say Malkainu. Right, right, that is true. That is true, absolutely. So right. I said there are different, I mentioned that there are different ways to do it. I personally do the Al Abu That's just, I'm playing my, uh, my bed safe. Um, and I ask... One of my rabbinic ministers, all when he suggested I do, and that was for Barn Kamluf, who was Mishamish under Rabbi Heineman. He's uh, sort of my go to Alonic expert. He's, he's my guy, like, I can give you an example. A student of mine once called me. 
she was asked by her parents to go buy meat for them. And she was religious, they were not religious. This was meat for them, not for her. And they wanted her to buy meat at the corner grocery store, which was not gonna be kosher. For her to go buy kosher meat it was gonna be a half hour drive. And had she gone half an hour there and half an hour back, her parents would have been really upset. But she didn't want to feed her family not kosher food. So what do I do? And I, I got this Shiloh, the girl's like, you know, sitting there on the way to the grocery store. Like, I don't want to feed my parents a great party. So Ravar Teller is amazing. <laughs> he, uh, he's the man I can, I can always call and ask him. I had, uh, I had some crazy giver child also once, I remember. It's really wild. There's some guy who found out something with his grandmother and he was like melting down. I said, wait a minute, you hold right here. <laughs> so I asked him and he was the one that gave me those. Uh, those so what were the answer? The answer <laughs> was, yeah. Yeah, that's a, a fan. So what he answered is as follows. He said, there would be two possible issues. One of them would be with the Iber Losite Mishal, and one of, be, one of them would be a Messiah with the Arabeo. So with the Iber Losite Mishal, we know there's a halacha that you're not allowed to put a stumbling block in front of somebody. So the only time there is a lot of the Iber Losite Mishal is if the person's blind. Right? That is, if the person can't see the stumbling block and you place it in front of them, that would be an issue of the law. But here, they're looking for the stumbling block. So it's not Lifnei Iber, they ask for it. So there would be no problem of Lifnei Iber. He said in terms of Misael and Varavera, that is not as strong as the law of Lifnei Iber. And here's the issue. The longer term goal with the family is to create a positive relationship. And if you do things like that, you're gonna drive them crazy. So the only reason why you're going to buy them non-kosher food is because you wanna maintain a positive relationship with them. So that long term, at some point, who knows, maybe they'll uh, you know, eat, have kosher food when you come to the home, or uh, who knows, maybe they'll feel so positive, they'll, they'll you know, kosher a portion of their kitchen, and they'll use it when you're around, or whatever. So because that's a longer term game, and the only reason you're providing them with non-kosher food is so that long term, you can you know, bring them closer to a life of Torah observance, it would be okay, it wouldn't be considered a I heard a story um, told by a many, many years ago by a Hillel rabbi and his wife, who was a, uh, wife was a uh, of Shuba, and she said her family came from a long line of reformed Jews. The idea of keeping kosher was like saying, I'm gonna you know, practice witchcraft. <laughs> and she's getting married in a couple of months, and she asked, could they have, she have a small place, one pot in the kitchen she could use for herself, and her parents said, absolutely not. And so the story was we have a Masora. I mean, come on, we eat fish. <laughs> so so she, went, she went to her and says, You know, should I move out of the house? What should I do? He said, Absolutely not. He said, Try to avoid eating out of purpose, but just go, you know, go with, the, with that because there's a longer issue here. And she said, You know, in, in the end, it was the right decision because the parents, not that they went ahead and kept pushing, but they, they kept a lock cabinet and they were very respectful mm -hmm. as time went on. Yeah, so Barbara Shem, it happens. Yeah. It happens. So we'll see what the story ends with this girl. Yeah. It was funny. Yeah, as it always happens, I'll get through this in a moment. The, the girl's father was not Jewish. The girl's mother was Jewish. And the one who supported her Jewish exploration is the mother. His right. father, of course, was. Oh, 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 wonderful. It's great. Fabulous. Yeah, right. Whatever you want. I married my own Jewish. Sure. Yeah. I'm, you just tell me where to stand, what to do. I, I don't have to do anything. I'm not Jewish. It's okay. And the mother, I can't believe it. Why can't I read the Ksuba? Why can't I? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, in terms of uh, the end of the of the Yeah. Uh, you had mentioned before about trying, you want people to start trying to together. I've always found that that's a positive for this because it slows you down. Especially if you do it really slowly, it gives people the opportunity to, to catch up. Catch up and, and Interesting. Get, so that's yeah. a collateral benefit? I, yeah. Because uh, I noticed that during the weekday, when no one ever does that, you lose you know, that those few extra. Your mom's going to sort of catch up yes. and, and begin to run a switch together with everybody. Yes. That's really interesting. Yeah. I never thought about it. Like actually, and, and it's nice. When Shah is dominant, people should be able to dominate the message together. Are you going to yeah. have a separate cheer on the Hashama Dominant? That's going to be a success. Yeah. <laughs> 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 he just gave it. It was just too fast. It's going to be 20 minutes in and out with uh, and then scotch outside for everybody. <laughs> okay. Um, I'll just do it quickly the, the sort of yeshiva shnosok because you know you might be in that sort of setting. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, um, we are now five minutes to nine. So I'm wondering if we maybe should call it here and then continue with Chazar Sashat uh, next time. Does that seem reasonable? Yeah. Can we move on to Musa? Uh, yeah, okay, yeah, we can, we can move on to Musa. Um, I, what I do want to do, though, is I want to do the brachos for Nav Torah, in addition, because sometimes people are called up for Matir, and I think it's valuable to know the, the brachos for Nav Torah. Mm -hmm. So we'll do that, and then, and then we'll do Musa. Okay. Sure. Been wonderful. Yeah. Question. Yes. Yeah, sure. yeah, sure. the Shabbos, the one who got up, and he, he didn't seem by like even so wrong, which our, you know, our shul always does. Right. But you know, that's not. It's not critical. What did happen this week? This uh, week, I've never seen, and I've been in the shul for many years. Is the person who got up for the Torah wasn't didn't read the Torah. He just made the brachos. And he told the God by about 20 seconds before, he said, you the brachos, you'll have to do the Torah. That was amazing. Do you think to ask the God by before, is that your midnight position? Do you know what's fascinating? I had the exact opposite experience this job is in Baltimore. I uh, I got out of Shoal and was doing mock here. And I said, I'll be happy to do the Torah. And it's not like they had a clock. You know, right. they didn't have a clock, so you need somebody to come in. Right. I said, I'll be happy to do the Torah. They said, no, no, no. He does it. The Bob Torah. Oh. I'm like, okay. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I guess it goes both ways. Bottom line is, two Jews, at least three of Yeah. Okay, have a good evening. <laughs>